boo, whoa, boo. A biggie bobble boo. Hello. Hello. I got the turning seat. I got the turning seat. I'm turning around. I'm doing spins today. I'm still doing spins from last night. I did way too much. Wait. Way too much last night. The 420 celebration. Damn, after Afro Man left the show, I was a little bit discombobulated. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yes. Welcome, everybody. It is 420 Live with Jeff Kravitz. I am your host, Jeff Kravitz. And um, I want to... Thank you all for coming in, tuning in today. It's a beautiful day here in uh, Los Angeles. The sun's out. It's still cool enough where you want to stay in and not feel the need to go to the beach. But I would love to go to the beach. I'd love to go anywhere. You know, I used to think I didn't get invitations to go places. And now I'm like, I definitely have invitations to go anywhere. And I'm like, geez, nobody's inviting me anywhere. It's not really true. I end up going everywhere. I've been all over this great planet. And, uh, Yesterday was uh, the culmination of the 420. 420 was the date at 420 on 420 2020. There's 420s every time you turned around. And I was in the middle of it. And, you know, it wasn't intentional. I mean, this was just a 420 hang. I had no idea that it was going to be 420 when we came into April all month. And that now it's still 420 all month. 420 always in my life. And I'm sure a lot of you celebrate and keep yourself sane by uh, medicating. And uh, I've been taking the CBDs every day and feeling them rush through me. <laughs> like, wow, this stuff really works. So, uh, see, it's uh, we're in a great, we're in a great, amazing energy building place right now. I feel like everybody is uh, collecting all the family energy. I was talking to my friend Dan Berkowitz today, and we were talking about what it was like to be home for this extended period of time with your family and how important it is and how we don't do it because we just get so caught up in what we're doing in our lives um, that we're always running around here to there. So to be in one place and focused and to have, you know, we're going six weeks into this. I, I, two, we do two meals a day at the house. Uh, my wife's only started recently letting us order in. So, <laughs> Uh, you know, we do a lot of cooking. I've done a lot of pot scrubbing, the most pot scrubbing I've ever done in my life. And uh, it's been uh, like a hundred some odd meals or something like that over the 50 days. And so it's kind of daunting uh, trying to come up with something original to eat. And also how simple sometimes you're like, you know what, just heat up that slice or whatever in the fridge and I'll eat that for dinner. You know, we're not as fancy as we used to be, but we're doing a lot more cooking at home. The girls are setting up uh, gardens and everybody is kind of, uh, circling the wagons and realizing that we just don't want to, uh, you know, uh, be caught down without our own <laughs> little food source. So, I mean, it's hard to disaster prayer prep in this world and we're all going shopping. And my wife went to the market yesterday and flipped out about the, the proximity and went up to the manager and started yelling, people aren't wearing the masks right. And I'm like, yeah, you got, it's really hard out there because you want everybody to play and, and do the right thing. And, followed by the rules. And at the same time, you have people that are revolting and being like, yeah, we want to be together. So it's uh, it was good to see everybody yesterday. I really enjoyed our guest. Leon was great. It was great to catch up with Leon. And uh, we gave away that nice tube with Brian Raskin, John Phillips telling that story about press pressing an album out of resin, which is kind of crazy. And then Afro Man coming in at the end there. So I don't even know what. I was just like, I it's hard to understand. He speaks a language that I had to kind of <laughs> interpret as I was talking to him. But like, OK, here's what he's saying. And, you know, I, I mean, the guy hasn't had a hit in 20 some odd years. So it's really hard. Like, hey, what was your what was your last big hit? You're still milking the one weed song. But the guy who wrote San, uh, Grandma Got Run Over by Reindeer has made tens of millions of dollars off that one song. So I guess if it's the right song, it really doesn't matter who it is. In Speaking of songs and music, we're all fans here. I know all my friends are fans, all my, the, my friends that are in this business that are music managers, all my photographer friends. The reason we picked up a camera was to get close to our favorite artists and be able to be feel like we're in the mix and get in that photo pit and bang it out. And um, a lot of us have had our past carved out by the music we love. 
And my next guest, Peter Shapiro, has uh, had a life of pretty much creating his own muse. Um, you know, if you read about him on the internet, which I did today, to, just to refresh my memory, uh, it was more like me remembering all the shit we've done together than anything because of such a stoner. Like, wait, wait, oh shit, Green Apple Festival. Oh shit, Jammy Awards. Oh shit, Lock In. I mean, there's so many different things that Shapiro's been at and we've been friends for a long time and always running in, in each other in the craziest circles because he started his existence as like a film guy. So uh, I want you all to say hi to Peach Shapiro from the Brooklyn Bowl at Capitol Theater in New Jersey. Hello, Peach. Hey, Jeff. How are you, brother? How are you? Uh, it's good. Uh, it's pretty. It's good to hear your uh, how good you are at this. Yo, thank yeah, thank you. Thank you. Pretty impressed. That was pretty well, impressed there. I am. Um, I'm full of hot air, so now I'm just trying to channel it. You know, when when we're hanging out, when I see you at shows, you know, it's quick bits, and uh, you're always on there. You know, so this is harder. This is more long form credits. <laughs> You know, because you don't sit still like me that long when you're at shows. And that's why you're probably good with the photo thing. You're always moving around. I've never seen you so still. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, in one, in one piece. Uh, Shaft, I see you blow into events for six hours. The what, six hours? You turn, turn, turn your volume down a little bit on your phone. Okay. Uh, um, I'll see you blow in on, on a trip. You'll come into Bonnaroo for six hours. Oh, yeah. And, and then leave. So you're the yeah, case. Happy. Happy. I mean, honestly, one of the things I've thought about with what we're going through is I'm happy I've lived. Uh, a few weeks ago, I went to the fish uh, thing in Mexico. I left New York. Uh, I left the office about three o'clock, went to the airport, flew down. Thankfully, um, you know, we flew to Cancun. And the show was just 10 minutes from the airport. So I landed. I think I had a five o'clock flight. I landed around eight, got to the venue, saw the full show hung out and then flew home at 6 a.m. and was in the office, I think like, you know, around one o'clock noon. So I had a full day Thursday in the office and Friday. But in between that night, I went to see Fish in Mexico. And so, and I went, you know, commercial, normal, tag in, but it's just about how to live a life um, and try and get both that part of it and the family stuff you know it's it's hard to go and for me to stay for three days four days i'd like to but i want to get that hit and i'm so glad i got it especially now um because it, it lasts with you for a while you know now i've always wanted more you know sooner than six weeks <laughs> so i think this is probably the longest i've gone without a show probably since i'm 18 or 19 or something wow yeah, no, I always, it's my life. I don't really see it as like shows is one part, the other is all one thing. That's why I can transition in and out. I, I actually, um, the band Strange Folk growing up, I love so much uh, Wetlands. And uh, the first time they played at Wetland, at Brooklyn Bowl, I, I set it up, but somehow like I screwed up and I set up spring break also. So I, I, um, I put, the strange folk show in the middle of spring break in California when I had little kids were going to like Disneyland. And so I was in California spring break and I left for the night. I did one of these deals. No, I took, cause Roxy, my daughter, we went to Disneyland. She's like, daddy, can we go again tomorrow? And I was like, well, good news and bad news. Yes, we can go again on this trip, but like, it's not going to be tomorrow cause daddy's going to New York to see his friend Strange, I had to be at the Strange Book show, but I'm going to fly back and take you to Disneyland like the next day. And I did, the, you know, I, it helps to be able to sleep on planes. Yes, and you're used to it. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I can sleep anytime, anywhere. Um, I still now probably, I'm still tired. Like, I just built up a lot of endurance from like, I did a show every night, every night in New York for 20 years, I put on a show pretty much so even when you're not at the show it, it still takes some energy because like if things go wrong you know you're gonna get a phone call and like if you're at the movies taking a night off and the phone rings or you're hanging out and the phone rings and you're trying you know you got to look at it because it's not really usually good you know someone needs you and if you're good at what you do of doing this stuff you you need you know you need to pick up you know that they need your they wouldn't be calling without unless they needed you so 
I just this is a break for me. There's no fucking yeah. phone call. It's nice. Yeah, but every, everybody's at home, and you're in New York City in an apartment. I can see the buildings there behind you, so you're, you're right in the middle of the city. How's that? You know, like you said, I thought your intro was really good. You know, you're with your family. You know, wherever that is, you want to be home. You know, we're going to travel to stay at home. You know, the kids are in school, the digital school, which is interesting to watch and probably affect, you know, like you can't really stare off in the sky as a kid mm. like you can in a classroom with 25 people in the back. Just And I look off into the sky when I was a kid. When you're doing the digital, the computer school, and there's a lot, you know, the younger guy I have is the live, my older daughter less. But like if they call you, you know, you got to be, you got to be right there. So it's good for the kids. And um, I got a roof deck. I wish I could show people like no one's here. So the building, I don't have one. The building has one. So, but no one's here. So it's ours. So we play a lot of floor hockey, street hockey. And actually my kid Simon is going to learn to rollerblade during this Corona thing. Like we ordered, that's one thing that's made Corona. Like our world's screwed up in a lot of ways, but like the Amazon thing is good and bad, you know, in, in this world. The good part though, is you can have Corona going and be like, we should order rollerblades. And Simon right. should learn how to rollerblade during Corona. Do something and, new. And then the rollerblades like show up two days later. And so Simon uh, has learned to rollerblade during this. I mean, just going in circles on a little outdoor deck, you know, but that counts. I, I mean, you, you've literally stopped in a life where you've had Brooklyn Bowl in New York, Vegas, you have the Capitol Theater. You have the, the, the locking coming up. I mean, you still got plenty of time before locking's coming up. So hopefully that squeezes in in the fall. But there's so much stuff that you have going on, and all of a sudden everything just stops. And yeah, now I'm going to get sad. I mean, when you list all that stuff, and I think that's why I'm talking, that's why I'm talking about rollerblading. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to talk about CBDs. Or something. Um, no, uh, no, uh, no, 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 we're no, no. I'm being no. I'll, I'll talk about it. Listen, it's it's. Uh, I'm gonna whatever I can do in the team, an amazing team. Like keep the team, make it to the other side of the water. I'm gonna make it. You know, it's hard. You know, I don't. You know, it's hard to not know what's ahead. But I sit here with like thinking all the time, like what it might look like, how we might be able to do things pre-vaccine, you know, with testing and like how we'd open early and get people in and what and do stuff. And you don't know what's really possible, but you got to be thinking about how you might do it so that when it comes, you're ready. So I'm doing a lot of that, you know, and each one's different. The cap's different than the bowl in Vegas is different than, we, you know, the bowl in Nashville was like you we got hit by basically by the building next to us in Nashville we're in Germantown where the tornado literally hit the building next to us was destroyed fully destroyed whoa complete right next to us sure like over there like what that what, I mean a little bit further um you know distance wise on that one and, and so we got through that and the team it was rough and I can't and we were ready we we're gonna open the new venue Brooklyn Ball in Nashville tornado it's a and then this hit and we were going to open on uh, Friday, March 13th, oh. to the party. And then the per Soul Live was playing with George Porter on 14th. I was doing Phil Lesh's 80th birthday, March 13th, 14th, right. 15th. So we had so much coming. But but I'm trying to just take, you know, I'm focused on, like, we're still going to do it. And it'll be needed more. Like, I think, yeah, some people may not come out to shows. You know, some not right away. Maybe some people will do it less for for a longer time but i know a lot of people will come back stronger and need it you know you realize when you don't have it you know like how much you know how much you loved it i think a lot of people well, of course i mean you like you said you haven't been to a show there hasn't been a gap since you were 18 19 years old where you haven't seen no. for six weeks and i'm the same way i'm always going to see music i mean if i go more than 48 hours without a show i'm like okay i need to go somewhere to see something else. Uh, by the way, I was going to say, yeah, not just, it's the longest gap 18, but really for 20 years, I haven't gone more than like a day or two, really, without seeing a show. So, well, like and you promoting shows and being involved in shows, it's always something that you've always been doing. And you've always got something coming up, too. So. Yeah, I love going to the show. That's the best part of what I do. When so, I'm at the show, I can rely. I feel like, I mean, I'm working, but I'm at the show, but I, I'm able to like, I love the shows. That's, you know, I can see it. So, as so a, I really like going when I'm not. 
you're, you're sitting there. Yeah, you, you have all this time. You're sitting there, and I know you got some cockamamie idea in the back of your head for when all this comes out to throw some big old bash. What would be your dream thing that you could put together? Not to not to tip anything, but if there was something you could do, like some big old thing, where would you choose to do it? And what do you think it would be? Led Zeppelin. <laughs> you were the closest one to ha to make that almost happen. Actually. I brought it up to Robert Plant once. I had, and then, like, I was with him at the Capitol, and like, I hope he's not watching. I don't think he is. Like, you know, when um the Flintstones when Fred had like the guy flying in his ear, like he'd be talking to Wilma and be like, sure, Wilma, yeah. And like the little guy was flying, be like, no, don't do it. Like I was hanging out with Robert playing at the Capitol and we had done a bunch of shows already and he had played Lockin and uh, never told the story probably public. You know, we were hanging out in my room in a fish tank and like I was talking to him and he's really um, learned and interesting and like ask question really nice you know so you got to be present that's the word when you're hanging out with him right he's robert plant you got to be present and like i was having two conversations one with him and then the other was the fred flintstone buzzing guy in my ear like ask him go for it ask him <laughs> like about <Flint. laughs> and i didn't know whether to do it or not and uh but i kind of floated it but um I've got some cool stuff. I'm going to do something uh, cool randomly. I don't know if we talked to, or we didn't, we haven't, I just jumped on, but I'm doing something cool with the Lorax that's going to come out tomorrow, actually, I think. Um, the Lorax is interesting just because he he spoke for the trees and it was came out in 1971, Dr. Seuss book, and it was about the importance of protecting nature. And the Lorax, you know, was, was like, don't cut down all the trees or you're going to screw it up. And without nature, you know, when you cut down the trees, there's less forest. And what's happened, and it's ironic, because it's kind of like the moment we're in, is a little bit because, you know, when there's less forest, animals get closer to humans. Habitat gets messed with. And what, however it exactly happened, what you know, what we're in, it's, it's we, we all they all know, like for sure, it has to do with like animals somehow getting into human world. And um, so I'm gonna take the um the book the lorax and and put it to song and we're gonna do a teaser tomorrow the first song which will be cool and i'm just thinking like locking you know we, we are we're gonna be in june and i'm like you know because we have the land we can be like we're gonna try for first week of october i i think we're gonna pull it off you know you'll probably take a test to get in i'm not saying we're just gonna open the gates but and we don't know every detail but like if there was a festival that like you could open the door, you know, start loading. We already start loading on Wednesday for lock and people are like coming from the hinterland. Like, let's go in early, you know. <laughs> so we started Tuesday and like uh, take a little longer to get in. Take the test. That's But once you're in. Take the test. Take every yeah. temperature. Hopefully, We're going to be doing that. Hopefully it'll be a rec rectal, rectal thermometers. Um, Whatever it takes, you know, I'm, I think people will do it, you know. Hey, so. listen, I think people will do it. I think people will do it, too. So today, before I went on the air, uh, one of my clients is Life is Beautiful in Las Vegas, the festival. And they're on the last weekend in September. And they sent out an email today saying, and they haven't even come out with their lineup. Uh, my friend, uh, Craig Asher Nyman, he, he uh Spent a lot of time on that lineup. They hit me today just before I came yeah, on. Yeah. Saying, We're done. We're not going to come back in, in 20. Oh, really? I yeah. thought you were about to say they're going to. Yeah, well, you know what? That You know, if I was in a downtown municipality, I've been to that event, probably seen you there. It's a great event. You know, if I was in Boston, Chicago, like Gov Ball, Boston Calling, you know, Jazz Fest, you know, 70,000, that, that kind of crowd, 60, 70,000 people downtown in a city, I wouldn't try for 20 either. Yeah. but i'm in the woods yeah you <laughs> yeah, are we're not gonna let that many people in we're gonna reduce it and you're gonna take the test i have a good way and i'm gonna open on tuesday or wednesday you know they can't do that life is beautiful be like come on into the concrete parking lot i mean it's a nice parking lot but it's a parking lot you know wait and come for four days you know i don't know if that works that's, that's, that's oh that's, wow is that, that's locking yeah that's locking that was smooth dude well done thank you well, you know, I had to sneak around Jay Blakesburg to get on stage, but I worked it out. 
you know, I'm getting old. I got to put my glasses on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's locking. Now, locking the idea was you started that with two stages. You know what I like two. about that? It looks a little bit like Jazz Fest in the wood, like in the Blue Ridge Mountains, which is what it's supposed to look like. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, so you you started with two separate stages, right? So the music never stopped, and everybody was would be in the same place all day, back and forth, and that was kind of the idea of locking. And now it's on the uh, rotating stage, which is a lot easier, right? Yeah, because so it came about like going to Bonnaroo every year. It was too, I, those are the best, the early years of Bonnaroo, and I know I saw you. Oh I yeah, and I don't know how. I just know I saw you. Um, um, I think I saw you every, you know, a lot of places. Um, oh, yeah. I'm not, I don't know where I saw you, but I know I saw you a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, Bonnaroo. So you know what happened? You this probably, you'd end up like Beck was over here, you know, and Flaming Lips are over here, you know, and you know Will goes over here, and it's like all at the same time. Amazing, like eight stages. And you'd be just like, where do we go? Like, let's go that away, you know? And then let's just go back to the bus and hang out. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it's hard to see everybody. On the bus. Kevin, I remember you were there. I know Kevin Morris, Chewy, a bunch of people I know were there. I have no clue what year. This is like every year. Patrick Jordan was there. Anyways, <laughs> you'd end up on the bus, Patrick Templeman too. And then not see, because there was overwhelming choice of what to do. So the idea of locking was actually just have one can you hear the kids arguing yeah. one stage all day you don't have to move no don't use your brain because like when i'm skiing i don't like to i get to my brain i like to follow right and like too many decisions to pull out the schedule of bonnaroo and pictures what you wanted that's what, that to me was like too much and so the idea of locking is you stand in one place and then after the band played so you don't have to go to another stage the other band with the other stage would start and we did the two stages side by side, which was super fun for a while. I thought the best part was if you stood at the back, just like the view at the bowl and the cap, a lot of these venues, like the visual at the bowl with the screens, the cap of the walls is best in the back. Like at lock-in in the back when we had the two stages, see what we had was the, uh, we had four, one year I think four screens and one year maybe one big one in the middle. Because usually at a big concert, the IMAG, the, the, the Jumbotron is two of them. Right. But with the two stages, they were like full size next to like connected. We actually, I wish I had a pair, had four, right? Because you had two and then two. So if you stood at the back, I had a, like the band on the left was playing, but all four screens were on. So that was my favorite part was all the screen. It was really cool. Uh, you know, it's a 420 show, so I'm trying to hit it. Listen, I got a really hard question for you. I, I need you to come clean on something, okay? How the fuck did you get the rainbow to work? I know. I still, when I see it every time, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> come on. Uh, you, you did that, Shapiro. I know you paid to do that. You know how many fucking you got fists I got in over that, Shapiro? To it doesn't people. really look real. I don't know because it wasn't raining. You can see that's the other call part. <laughs> those clouds just don't look normal. Um, and then what happened, you know, Shirley Halpern, of course. Uh, so that happened. And right away she texted me, Shirley, who's our friend who writes for billboard. And she was feeling the 420, I think. <laughs> and she's like, how, well, how did you do that? It was right at the end of the first set, if you remember. And I'm like, do you like, what do you mean? It's a rainbow. She's like, really? Come on. Tell me. Come on, dude. You make that you how much? And I'm like, what are you talking like? I couldn't believe it. She's like, all right, come on. So finally, she's like, but I'm like, fine, 50 grand, you know, fine. I made it, 50 grand. After I told her, honestly, no, several times. And then, like, I swear this happened. She, the next morning, oh no, that night, I think I was going back. One cool thing about putting on Fairly was like, you get to go in the back. It's the only time it's happened to me, like, get in the van and do the runner thing with the van. And we're in a van heading back to Santa Clara to the um, hotel. I think the hotel was in San Jose and we were in the van. I, I was with Justin Kreutzman and Brett Fairbrother and we opened the phone, checked out, oh, the, you know, the first night of Fairly Well and like billboard posts, Shirley posts a story. It's like 
you know, it was an amazing night and all the articles, amazing night. And she writes in her billboard article that, you know, that everyone talked about this rainbow and she's like, yeah, and there's a rumor, word is that Pete Shapiro may have, you know, spent 50 grand to make the rainbow. And I'm like, oh my God, surely, like, you know, we were joking her out, like, and I told her no, and she put it, I tried to let it go. I thought she just was, had too much Kravitz time. <laughs> So check it out, this happened. That was like midnight. We woke up the next day and like the story, cause it's in billboard, just like a good Kravitz photo on wire image gets picked up, right? You better right. that happen. You know, the story, right? It was billboard, like gets picked up with like Reuters, you know, through Hollywood reporters and things. And then Reuters ran it and wrote the rumor and like all around the world and all these blogs. And then by the next morning it was Grateful Dead make rainbow. And that's, it just went everywhere because, and, and it was all from that. Um, yeah. But that, I, and people, you know, you cannot make a rainbow. That just. No, that, you cannot just, make a rainbow. And it was the strangest thing because I was out of my mind and I just saw the whole place turn pink. And I was like, what is going on? And then when I finally looked up and the funny thing was where I was, nobody pointed Nobody yelled a rainbow. It's just like all of a sudden everybody saw everybody looking up and, and putting their hands up and going, oh, my God. And I was like <laughs> trying to rub it out of my eyes because I was sure that there was no way it was real. But, you know, I don't think the moment was lost on any of us that. You, you know, know what? I'm going to go over. I think it's over here, is it? We, we were in the right place at the right time. No, it is. I don't know. Is it? Oh, actually, it's not the rain. I was like, is it a rainbow? No, it's the fireworks. Oh, the fireworks. Um, it's a great shot. I had, I had it there in the fireworks. But um, yeah, it's changed my life, the rainbow. It's still like one of the things that like, it's hard traveling, like red eyes and all that stuff. I One of the best parts of Fairly Thee Well of my whole life. There's good and bad parts. One good thing here is like I'm not getting requests for like guest list stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no one's asking for anything in a long time. Yeah. And then people in the airport sometimes, often it's airports, yo, bro. Are you, know, you P Peter? I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, they're all, they swear. That's what I'm like, yo, bro. That, you know, they're often really nice. Thank you for the shows. And they're like, yo, like, yo, the rainbow. You're like, is that real? <laughs> I always, I always get asked if it's real. But, um, <laughs> well, it was real. All right. It was, it was the best thing that ever, just the whole, because weathers, look at what's happened. I mean, this isn't a weather thing, but like, I mean, and after this, I mean, we're going to come back, but I'm just so lucky, fairly, like it happened when it did, the way it did, just the way the America is today and security stuff. I don't think, like, getting into a stadium is different now. That was the last show at Soldier Field in July of 15, the last show ever in a state, a football stadium in America that has, like, an NFL team, which is the 30 major, that didn't have the full walk through an airport scanner thing. Because it happened in July, and then in August, the stuff in Paris happened. Remember the terror? You know, so when yeah, that yeah. stuff happened in Paris, the and all the American arenas and stadiums put new policies in. Listen, I'm not just saying fairly well was different because it didn't have the airport. You know, you didn't walk through that, but but it was different. You know what I mean? Just that sets a tone. Like, and we've worked hard at Brooklyn Bowl. We have this new kind of technology that you just walk through without taking your wallet in front. You know, when you go through that, you know, I, listen, it's not a huge deal, but I'm just glad that fairly well, like you didn't have to walk through that. Yeah. You know, you got to, and we did things like, you know, I'm glad like small things, but but our small things are often big. Like we got all the security people to um, to wear tie dye shirts. If you remember. They still had their number, you know, they're still working, but like, it's amazing. And that, you know, it was a good get that that would have a lot of impact. So I think like how you walk into something what the security is like. Those are big, you know, parts of the experience. Well, it was an amazing celebration. It was also you know, biting off a lot because you're dealing with a band that is dysfunctional as far as dealing with each other in a lot of ways and then trying to bring in other players that are part of their team to try to make it work. And, and you pulled it off. It was incredible. And because of those shows, we got dead in company because I guess those guys were like, whoa, look at all these tickets we sold. <laughs> well, also the fans wanted, you know, part of the reason we did Soldier Feel Big is about scale, the dead thing. For me, a lot of it was like summer, dead, outdoor, scale, big. It's back to this stuff where we're sitting home alone. Like, 
big scale. I hope he comes back. Is that like going to a dead show? There's nothing like the parking lot. Both arriving at the show and like five or six o'clock and a lot, whether you're in Camden or Shoreline or Soldier Field, like, and uh, I just wanted to try to make that. That's why I'm big. And uh, so people experience big again. And they, it was great to see the dead and further in, in at Radio City or the Capitol or Lockin, but like people wanted that bigness because that that summer experience so i think that's why and it's been awesome that dead and co is at amphitheaters so kids who are 20 your kid you know you can can experience that because that's different going to a summer dead show in an amphitheater than well and and, and the, the sight smells and sounds of going to a dead show right. are very unique and when you experience it you, you never forget it and the one thing i remember about going to those shows and walking in a lot and walking into that venue was like holy shit I'm back at a dead show. You brought all the elements together. Well, I guess the fans bring a lot of those elements, the lot scene and, and the fans outside begging for tickets and stuff. It's just it's, all of it was so memorable. And, and you've created so many experiences like this, Pete. You know, uh, hats off for you Thanks. just following your dreams. I mean, you just started off as a deadhead. I mean, this, that's how it all started, right? You just yeah, no, it started as a deadhead. Hammer. It started like I have a moment. Like I let, I went to my... March 11th, 93, Rosemont Horizon. Like, I was a student at Northwestern. I went with my friends. Like, I believe that, like, if I hadn't gone to that show that night, probably not on this, doing this with you, because, like, it led me, you know, I went to the show. They did, like, a spoken word thing with Ken Nordine. If they didn't do that, I might not be here, because I got, I was 420, or I was just out, you know, in a place, and I left the show. They were doing this wow, wow, <laughs> really intense if you were like 20, you know, and like not being, I was my second dead show. And I left and I went to the parking lot, it was snowing. And I saw all these like drum circles and like, I hadn't seen that really before, you know, ever. First time you see a drum circle in a parking lot when it's snowing in Chicago. <laughs> like, that's a big deal. I was like, what is this? You know, and they were not going back. They were in the school bus, Yeshua, not going back to college like me or home. Like they were, it was just very different. And then I ended up being like, I want to, I went and made a film about that. So from that night, I went to the library. I don't know how I found my friends because they didn't have a cell phone. I don't know how we did it. How'd you get lost when you were 20 in a lot of detention? How'd you get home? I don't know. I have no clue how I made it back, but I know I went to the library the next morning looking for like what had been done about the deadhead scene. And then I know six weeks later, I went in a van and to make a film about it and led me here basically with you. So it was more the scene around the dead than the dead that got you into it at first. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know I love the music, man, but yeah, definitely. I saw that scene. I'm like, what? I couldn't get into the show. I couldn't get an interview with the band. This is, uh, I'll tell you one more quick thing. I got to go to dinner. Okay. I got one. It's, it's good to talk about this stuff because during the day, it's so much craziness. So this is a good story. When they did fairly well, do you remember at halftime, you know, obviously, you know, so I worked with Justin Kreutzman, made some good decisions. Like we should work with Candace and lighting, Justin Kreutzman, not that hard to pick, you know, pick for, for making the uh, dot, you know, in the set videos. And we would make like doc cool. We would do cool shit. So I, Justin's doing, we had, you know, five shows. And break, they took longer breaks. So we had four. I'm like, and we do music. That's how where Circles Around the Sun came from. Right. Just like that. And we put visual to what Circles did, which was to be evocative of the sound of the dead, but not be the dead. And so we're talking about what the visuals are going to be. And I'm like, yo, I made this documentary in the summer of 93. I went on dead tour. Hey, there's Simon. Um, and I have this footage. I, I, the dead, they wouldn't let me into the band, into the backstage, but I have the lot and I have all this footage. He's like, wait a minute, dude. He's like, summer 93. Like, I was backstage with a video camera. We were the same age. We both had these big video cameras you could have in 93. And I was outside and couldn't get in. He was backstage hanging with Jerry. And his dad, he didn't, he didn't want to go to the lot. He was hanging out with Jerry. And I'm like, yo, do you have, like, what show? The Deer Creek. We were at the same shows. So we took, like, footage from Deer Creek, um, where I had the lot. The June of 93, I same show, whatever the date was, I'm in a lot, he's backstage, and we cut back and forth. 
at Fairly Well on the screen while Circus played. Do you know what I mean? So it's the same fucking day going back and forth between outside and inside. I was out and couldn't get in. He was in, didn't come out. And we were, this is 20 years, 22 years before. We didn't know each other. We didn't meet for 20 years. And, and who knew that we were then shooting for what would then be used by the band for their reunion at halftime. And like, that's, that's the story. That's the Grateful Dead, right? We were doing it. We just didn't know we were doing it. We were probably the only two guys with big video cameras shooting. And then we came together later. It's pretty good, you know. That's where, 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 where is the footage? You can go online. It was called A Miles to Go. If you go on YouTube, the miles or, to just go. Google yeah, Miles to Go, Pete Shapiro, you'll see my, I went on tour in the summer 93. Yeah, I, but where, do you have the footage of the stuff you cut with Justin? Oh, We'd I don't know, probably that. in the DVD. I haven't really watched, you know, Fairly Well was so great. I got sent the DVD by, and I'm, sometimes I'll tempted, but I never really want, you know, I, I don't even, I think it's on there, some of it, but. Someone's going to have to drag it up. Well, do you have anything yeah. you're, you're supporting, anything you want to talk about, any fundraising efforts or. Uh, well, always head count. I'm the, proud to be. You are the chairman of head count. Yeah, we talks. had Andy on last week. He was yeah. great. He came on to talk about cannabis voter. Probably. By the way, you are good at this. Look how quick. I hope people watch and saw that. You can't fake. I just chucked head count. Bam. Private system. You're the chair. Like, yeah. <laughs> do the research. Yeah, the right. hey, hey, listen. Like I said, Pete, it brought up everything. I went through. I got to show you this one picture that I found in the archives. That's Walter Cronkite and Mike Gordon at the Green Apple Festival. Now, That's some this, serious hair by Mike. Yeah, Mike Mike had some good hair back in the day. Now, the green apple was right in the middle. I'm hoping that's right in the middle, right by Grand Central State, Grand Central Terminal, right? Yeah, we did that Vanderbilt Avenue. That's a cool fun. Oh, man. Yeah, we've, done, have, we've had a lot of fun. And um, that was tied to Earth Day as well. And so that that's Earth Day that, um, that's today, right? Earth Day's today. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. tomorrow the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. I was actually going to do a big event around the 50th anniversary on Saturday the 25th that's not going to happen. But like I said, I'm going to do something cool with the Lorax um, that I'm excited about that people will see, hopefully. But uh, yeah, Green Apple, we that was Earth Day. That picture was probably 2006. What is that? So that's yeah. like 14 years ago. 2006, that's absolutely right. And the other thing I wanted to throw in real quick was that you were the uh, most, you almost got the band together. I think they probably got together at Sam's right. wedding after this. That's that. Uh, that's that, the uh, um, jammies. The, yeah. At the jammies, you got all four guys on stage. I think they all played that night, but just in different bands. Yeah, but, that's the last jammies we did. They did like in Trey did that amazing um, "While My Guitar Gently Weeps" with the Fab Foe, and he, oh, it was one of his first performances from when he got healthy and came back. And uh, it was the first time they were all together, I think, right. since then. And we didn't know if they might, it came, but it was cool. It was the first time they came in, like, yeah, it's cool. I have a lot. Like, you, you, were, you, were, you were trying to stoke that fire, though, weren't you? Of course. You, I mean, yeah, you, you know. But by the way, I stoked it a bit. They got together. That counts. I was about to say, yeah, they may not have played, but that was the first time they got, you got to get together right. before you can play. Yes. And so uh, it was pretty good. I think we gave him the no, we gave him a lifetime. It's pretty good. We'll, just, we'll give you the lifetime achievement, Jamie, but you got to get back. You got to come pick it up together. What, what I don't think we knew that Fishman was coming to like the show started. What, what happened with the jammies? Just done or ran its course? They, I think they got like, we got like a phone call. It got too big and we got a phone call. You know, oh, really? Let's just say we got a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell. It's pretty. I got a phone call from Los Angeles, <laughs> from a you know organization that had an event that sounded like the Jammies. Oh, and they were like, "Your event." Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. So they asked us, nice, like, "Hey, if you did these other things, and like, really great, you know." So, um, and we ran it. Um, we did it. And I think log people ask about doing other jammies. I mean, if it didn't take so much it's six months of my life every time. And the last one we had one thousand land, you know. I got one it's I'll do one last tour. I gotta go to dinner. Go like ahead. this one just so you you ever put on an event 
where you have to fake the Lammies for your own event because you don't have enough. And you're like, you're, re you're renting the venue. And I hope Brandy Anner, if she's here, I don't even tell this one probably. She's not, she's not saying this. This is live, can't download it, right? So if this story happens, it goes away, right? Mm. <laughs> well, whatever. Go we, ahead. We, had, we needed the Lammies. I had to do it. I did the right thing. Maybe I should. Whatever, Go. we were at Roseland and like, this is a while ago, 20, 01, 02. And like, we needed like 500, you know, there's like 18 bands, 20 bands at the jammies. Everyone's got 20 guests. I mean, the bigger bands with 10 members. We had the Almonds and we had this, right. some bands five, but let's say we had four. And then we had our, the Relics team and Jeff Kravitz needs one. <laughs> Kravitz definitely needs one. Um. We needed like four or 500. When we got to the theater at the garden, the last one literally was a thousand. That's one reason like, we just can't do this. And it was just mega party. Um, so here's what happened. Roseland, they were like, you get 200 passes, that's it. And we were like, we were, pro we were producing the show. We rented Roseland, but they're like, you can't have more than 200 people backstage. We're not gonna give, we're not gonna permit it. Right. We are the venue, right? We own the venue. I was, but we needed 500. So we went, this is, this is good. I mean, I don't recommend this and I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> and I'm not guaranteeing that this happened. So what I, here's what happened. We went the night, we, we didn't want to get caught at the Kinko. So we had the intern go and take one Lammy. We got him the afternoon before the show. And we went, we had him go. Plausible deniability, because we were like, we didn't, you know, you know, he didn't care, the kid, we were like, we won't get in trouble. He took one, we opened it up, you know, we went and like laminated that, you know, Xerox, the thing inside, made it color, you know, and we made 300 extras. <laughs> and then this is what happened at the end of the night. It worked perfect. We did the right thing, by the way, for safety. Everyone needed a Lammy, it was safe. But if we didn't have them, we'd be passing them back. Kravitz wouldn't have had one, he'd be not happy about that. So check it out. We're settling the show at the end of the night. And the woman who's on charge of Roseland is we're standing there. And I think I was with the great John Schwartz. I this happened. And the lamb, he was minor, he starts to fall apart. It splinters off while we're settling. And she looks, it's the person who had been like, you only get 200. They she knew that we wanted more. And the lammy's falling apart. And it's obvious, she's like, what, what's happening with your lambing? And um, we just, <laughs> and we were like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know? And uh, but the lambing started to fall apart. And we, I only done that once, but sometimes, you know, you got to fake lammies for your own stuff. <laughs> Great shit. Pete Shapiro, thank you so much. Thanks, bro. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Enjoy your dinner to the family. I look forward to seeing you at, uh, turning around and seeing you at a show, you know? Me, me too. Particularly, let's do the rock call. <laughs> let's oh. do the inductions. I need one of those. Oh, killing me. Peace. Be good. Right. See, Pete. There you go. Legend. Peter Shapiro. I mean, I have so many questions you guys all lo load up, but you get them going, and you just got to let them go, because you know he's coming up with a nugget, and he's just uh, an amazing guy, great friend for decades, and you know, it's people like that that keep our scene together, that keep us in touch with each other and create these amazing events for us to go to and to see each other. And I think that's the hardest part about what we're going through now is that we don't have that bounce off. We don't have the people. We have no plans, no flights booked, nothing going on. So everything's FaceTime, house party, Zoom. You know, we're all getting together however we can. But you know, going through, I asked Pete to do it, and he's been going through a lot of shit in New York. He's had a lot of loss recently. Um, you know, a lot of close friends of him have passed away, and we're dealing, everybody is dealing with this crazy amount of grief right now. So it's it's good that uh, he, we have a time to reach out and to see each other and help each other get distracted and stay distracted. And that's why I'm here, and I appreciate you guys all coming in and tuning in and being here for us. I am going to go through the comments and thank everybody. I'm not going to go through them now and make this any longer than it is. We're coming up to uh, about 45 minutes on the air and I, I'm going to,
cut it while it's fresh. I'll be here every day. So if I have something else to say, you'll hear about it tomorrow. Everybody out there, stay safe. Take care of each other. Do something nice for somebody. Something unexpected. And here comes the hug. Oh, I paid it up today. It's getting hot. Love you guys. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad station.